Today we're going to take a trip to Dubai in the United Arab Emirates so that we can get fully immersed in some of the most carefully constructed PR campaigns of recent decades. World record holders here in Dubai. This is the Crown Prince of Dubai, and he, according to all of his press and social media, may well be the most awesome and incredible human being on the entire planet. Oh, and he's incredibly wealthy as well. Apparently, that's why we're here. These are 20 things you need to know about the Crown Prince of Dubai. Number 20. How the Crown Prince Spends His Billions So this is Hamdan bin Mohammed bin Rashid al Maktoum, not the shortest or even snappiest or easiest to pronounce of names. But apparently today we're going to poke about in the guy's finances and investigate exactly how he spends all of his bazillions of dollars. This inexplicably is interesting to people. So how does the crown prince spend his billions? Or hundreds of millions? Funnily enough, his financials are not dreadfully transparent. What the actual heck is this individual, and how insanely rich could he possibly be? Thankfully for the rest of this video and my mouth, he goes by the snappy and convenient nickname of Faza and has been the Crown Prince of Dubai since 2008. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19. Why he's called Faza. Writing poetry is a thing that the Crown Prince seems to be especially fond of doing. Apparently, his father is also a fan of expressing himself in verse, and so the Sheik goes by the name of Faza. This is an affectionate title that's been bestowed upon him by his followers on social media, because yes, he does indeed like to do stuff for the Insta, which is where he shares his passions for poetry, adventure sports, and photography, because insanely rich Sheiks like normal stuff as well. It's not all hypercars and luxury yachts, you know. Faza's apparently a word with its roots in the Emirati dialect, and that means a person who speeds to the help and support of others. And so, under his pen name, the Crown Prince writes a bunch of poetry in the Nabati tradition. And then people give him all the clicky likes all over the old interwebs. He says that he's trying to reach people and alleviate their suffering through his words in his own way, but I don't know, if you are literally a flipping prince and a ruler of a country and obscenely wealthy, perhaps there might be other ways you could alleviate suffering in the world. <laughs> I mean, I'm no expert in such things, but money and power are sometimes useful in reaching people, and reading someone else's poetry doesn't put dinner on the table. But then again, who could possibly say? Number 18. Sheikh Hamdan Adventures Now, it turns out that the super wealthy Sheik also enjoys a good spot of extreme sports. Well, when you're essentially rich enough to buy whatever you like and bored because you can do that, a few risky activities is often the way to go. Also, you don't need to trouble yourself about potential health insurance costs like us mere mortals. The Crown Prince enjoys hanging out in motorized paraplanes, or you know, hang gliding, paragliding, that sort of thing. And if you read all the accounts of his extreme sport flying exercises on the internet, you'll likely encounter some of the most sycophantic claptrap that you'll ever read in your entire life. If you believe the hype, then this guy is literally better than Superman. He has such extraordinary skills and strength that he makes all the things look effortless while remaining very handsome and clever during the entire process. <laughs> what a ruddy miracle! Number 17. He studied at Sandhurst. Like many of the world's more rich and royal types, Faza attended the Royal Military Academy at Sandhurst in the United Kingdom. This is the place that Prince William, Prince Harry, a whole bunch of other sheiks with really long and complicated names like the leader of Dubai and the Crown Prince of Jordan, they all went there to learn to be military types. This is the standard pathway for the most posh and wealthy around the world. It seems to be an especially favored thing for these Emirati royals to do as well. In the last 50 years, more than 200 of them have graduated out of this military academy. And the reason for this, well, likely is not, 
is all about prestige, to be honest. This place is super fancy and it basically fast tracks them so that after one year in this college, they can go back to their home nations and then serve as a military commander, as one does. Number 16. He's a keen fisherman. Now, you're probably beginning to get the idea that this guy is the face of Dubai. His main role appears to involve doing stuff that makes him seem young and virile and active and modern. But I don't mean to suggest that all of these things that we see are carefully stage managed, although they most certainly are, but rather the entire structure seems to be predicated on showing just how modern and forward looking they are, while also still maintaining an inherently archaic system for leadership and power, as well as having especially draconian laws for the regular people. But anyways, here's a totally natural and completely candid fishing trip with the crown prince, his closest friends, and entourage which just so happened to be completely documented, along with a whole bunch of articles about how truly marvelous that he really is. And look how exceptional his fishing skills are. He caught so many of the biggest fish, he's so merciful. Just watch him rescuing a crab and then returning it to the sea. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. Number 15. He is an animal lover. Next up, we have some examples of the crown prince smooching on camels to demonstrate what a wonderful individual he really is and how he's such an animal lover. Yes, getting snogged by a camel is definitely one of the best ways that I can think of to prove not only your deep and genuine love of all the animals, but it also certainly shows the world what a modern and progressive place that Dubai really is. In fact, this grasp of the use of social media to show how human the sheik is may be a stroke of genius in the old public relations game. I mean, look, he's driving a car. So very normal of him. Look, he's loving on camels. All of which he owns, by the way. He's such an animal lover, so relatable. Oh, look, he's totally normal. Dubai is so modern. There's nothing to see here. The government of the place is definitely modern and completely legit. And an absolute monarchy is a fully acceptable way to govern. I mean, nobody's even going to notice the lack of democracy if you can kiss enough camels and post them on the internet, right? Number 14. He's passionate about horses. Now again, we're witnessing just how wealthy the guy really is, and never one to turn down an opportunity for a bit of self-promotion and general media manipulation. Here we are with the crown prince and his father, you know, the guy who rules Dubai, for a day out at the stables. Except they're not only here to look at the horses or even to ride them, oh no, they're actually at a racehorse auction in England because that's a totally relatable and normal activity. I mean, who hasn't just popped over to England to purchase a pony or even five of them? And so the press machine swings into action and takes a lot of charming photos of the animal lover and his pops with a whole bunch of the most expensive and pampered horses in the whole entire world. The crown prince doesn't exactly shy away from sharing his animal encounters with his 16 million followers either, but it is the media that really lays it on thick, gushing with just how beautiful the sheik's interactions are. I mean, ugh, what's next? Number 13. He's into the Dubai Fitness Challenge. The Dubai Fitness Challenge is an annual citywide initiative in Dubai aimed at promoting health and wellness amongst its residents. Now this, like many other modern notions, would be launched by the Sheik. He is such a progressive chap now, isn't he? Anyways, the challenge encourages people of all ages and fitness levels to engage in physical activity for up to 30 minutes for every 30 days. This ambitious event seeks to transform Dubai into one of the most active cities globally because Dubai simply needs to keep on proving that it's the most and best and the biggest and everything else that's fabulous at everything. During the Dubai Fitness Challenge, the city becomes a hub of fitness events, classes, and outdoor activities. Participants can choose from a diverse range of activities, which includes group workouts, sports competitions, and wellness programs. The challenge not only promotes exercise, but also fosters a sense of community and well-being. There's nothing at all weird about an unelected prince demanding that his subjects do about 100 jumping jacks just because he wants them to or that everyone in a city joins in at the gym. There's nothing to see here at all. World record holders here in Dubai. 
Despite the slightly sinister undertones and the obvious parallels with his passion for group-based health and fitness campaigns that were so popular in certain nations during, you know, say the 1930s, this initiative has allegedly received widespread support from individuals, schools, businesses, and even government entities. It emphasizes the importance of a healthy lifestyle and aims to create a long-lasting impact on the overall well-being of Dubai's residents. Now you, drop and give me 20. Number 12. Climbing Burj Khalifa Back along, there was often a kerfuffle about how and which building was the world's tallest. This seemed to be something that many countries aspired to achieving within their borders, and in recent times, however, it would appear that, like with all the other biggest and shiniest things, the UAE has this area covered as well. The Burj Khalifa is a huge towering structure which has taken the title of world's tallest structure, there are some crazy numbers involved in the existence of the Burj Khalifa. This building is a staggering 2,716 feet and 6 inches tall, so it's no wonder that it's known as a vertical city. The structure took a total of 12,000 people from across the globe, and it's clad with 26,000 hand-cut glass panels, and of course that takes a whole heck of a lot of cleaning three months in fact to complete. So what does a bored and excessively rich prince do when he's finished demanding that his citizens all do some physical education? Well, he climbs the Burj Khalifa, of course. So here is old Faza performing said stunt for the cameras, because there would be absolutely no point in him doing anything at all if it could not be fashioned into an opportunity to show the world just how awesome that Dubai is. This was, he said, in celebration of Dubai's bid to host the 2020 World Expo. I'm sure that went really well now, didn't it? 2020 was such a great year to promote world travel, after all. Number 11. Marriage Back in 2019, Sheikh Faza got married to a woman with about 17 names that I am not going to even attempt to pronounce. This was a ceremony that was held on the very same day that the Sheikh's brothers also got married, and then they all had a massive and lavish celebration at the Dubai World Trade Center. Of course, if the Sheikh was to follow the laws of his own country, then he had to get married if he was to pursue a relationship which would involve any variety of adult special cuddles whatsoever. So yes, he was properly following the letter of the law, we can safely assume that he was saving himself for marriage, and as such, a paragon of virtue I'm sure that he was pure of course. This is because Dubai, like the rest of the UAE, follows Islamic law principles, and the legal system incorporates elements of both Islamic law and civil law. The UAE has conservative social norms, and the laws regarding extramarital sex can be very strict indeed. For example, extramarital shenanigans, including adultery, are considered a crime in the UAE, and penalties can include imprisonment, fines, and deportation for expatriates. Unmarried couples engaging in consensual relations can face legal consequences. Cohabitation outside of marriage is generally not permitted, and authorities may intervene if it comes to their attention. Pregnancy outside of wedlock is considered evidence of unlawful relations, and legal action can be taken against you. So, if anyone in the UAE wants to bump uglies, they'd better make it legal first, or else they may literally be sent to jail, or even worse. Number 10. He enjoys falconry. Now I'm sure that you already know that a man who's deemed to be such a wonderful human being with skills well beyond the comprehension of most mere mortals is also likely to be completely flipping excellent at just about every single hobby and pastime that you could imagine, and probably a few that you can't, just like falconry. Yes, Faza cannot get enough of this super niche sport. Falconry is a traditional practice that's both an art and a sport involving the training of birds of prey, particularly falcons, to hunt in partnership with humans. This ancient practice dates all the way back thousands of years, having deep cultural roots all across the Middle East, Asia, and Europe. In falconry, skilled falconers form a bond with their raptors, often using techniques that are passed down through the generations. Falcons are chosen for their keen eyesight, speed, and agility in flight, and the partnership between the falcon and the falconer is a delicate balance of trust and mutual respect. Falconry is not only a sport, but a living heritage, one that's recognized by UNESCO, highlighting its significance in preserving traditional knowledge and cultural identity. In fact, the Quran actually permits Muslims to eat animals that have been caught for you by a trained dog or a falcon. So falconry is a surprisingly popular pastime in the heritage of Muslim people. 
and in the wealthy UAE, this activity is enjoyed on a massive scale. Since 2002, the UAE has actually issued passports for falcons, so that their owners can travel freely with their birds. And naturally, the Sheik is absolutely awesome at it. I mean, there's no chance at all that he would ever suck at anything, so what would you expect? Number 9. He has celebrity friends. Birds of a feather flock together and all of that, so it should come as no surprise that this obscenely wealthy and famous man has a bunch of obscenely wealthy and famous friends. <laughs> Amongst the Sheik's most texted include Cristiano Ronaldo. I mean, we have each other on speed dial, so this is only slightly impressive. He also calls up Jackie Chan for a good time. And what do these celebrities like to do when they hang out together? Do they just sit around playing video games and breaking wind like you and your friends? Well, probably, but they're also never ones to turn down a jolly good photo opportunity, and they have agents that will insist that having their picture taken together is good for everyone. So here you are. This chic and his footballing legend best mate Cristiano hang out together. Apparently, they like meeting up whenever Ronaldo is in Dubai. And then they just seemingly hit up whichever location the crown prince feels is in need of a little bit of extra promotion. So their favorite places seem to include the Aura Sky Pool and Sushi Samba. What a fun one! The Sheik doesn't limit himself to the world's best footballer and old kung fu actors, though. He also has a soft spot for tennis players and can often be seen smiling next to the top-seeded players in the world as they enjoy promoting Dubai all over the social medias. Ahaha! <laughs> Such genuine and loving friendships. Number 8. Riding the London Underground Well, what do you know? The Crown Prince can take the subway just like a regular old Joe. This is rather extraordinary, and he didn't implode or anything. It's crazy! But he did manage to get himself photographed looking all normal and not even wearing his robes or anything. This is when the Sheik took a vacation to London and went around the city using the network of underground trains known as the Tube. Despite going seemingly incognito on the underground, he also managed to keep his bazillion followers updated about all of his ongoings while he was on holiday by posting all of his stuff all over the social medias. I mean, can you really say that something actually happened if nobody witnesses it on the gram? And what is the point of even doing anything at all if nobody else can see you doing it? And there you have it. Even princes can work public transport. Good for them! What a fun one it must be to rough it out with all the masses. Number 7. Releasing Turtles Back to the Sea in keeping with the Sheik's famous animal-loving nature, he's been seen releasing turtles back into the sea. His hotel complex also contains a place for poorly turtles. The Dubai Turtle Rehabilitation Project is based at one of the city's iconic hotels and is run by the Dubai Wildlife Protection Office. It's been up and running for over 15 years and has saved and rehabilitated almost 2,000 turtles within that time. Hawksbill turtles and green turtles are the species that nest in the Arabian Gulf, so, these are the animals that find their way to the sanctuary. Oftentimes, they're injured by being caught in fishing nets or from getting the waste from commercial fishing vessels tangled around them. And at other times, these creatures can encounter the pleasure boat hordes out speeding around in their fancy yachts and golden speedboats. It's a risky business being any kind of marine animal in the water these days. With pollution and dopey people and garbage at every turn, the hazards are numerous. So, this hospital is doing some important work in clearing up some of the messes that have been caused by the overconsumption and underregulated money-making paradise of the free market economy. Tough times for turtles, but at least there are some people who are willing to shell out to protect these beautiful creatures. Aren't these turtles lucky to have such a superhero sheet coming to their assistance? I mean, is it a bird? Is it a plane? No, it's Faza, and he's in turtle-saving mode and he's going to rescue the heck out of these creatures. Just make sure that somebody films it, please. Number 6. He went on a bike ride. This guy is surely the most action man figure that ever existed since Action Man himself. Not only did he study military junk at college, he can climb up anything, he can go down anything, he can do falconry, rescue stricken animals, catch big fish, buy expensive horses, hang out with celebrity mates, 
and even ride public transportation, and now he's done what is seemingly only possible in the movies. He went on a bike ride. I know, it seems impossible, but he did really do it. This is the Sheik leading a whole bunch of cyclists in a massive bike ride when Dubai's Sheik Zayed Road was turned into a huge cycling track instead of a boring old highway like usual. There were, in fact, about 20,000 cyclists in total taking part in this big event, and they all pedaled past the various landmarks of Dubai, all big and shiny skyscrapers, to be honest and made sure that they had a whole lot of pictures taken for the Crown Prince's social media followers. <laughs> Naturally, you know. Number 5. Sheikh Hamdan Palace Dubai is a city that is synonymous with opulence, so naturally it boasts several majestic palaces and extravagant places designed to reflect just how very fancy and important all of the family really is. While specific details about the interiors and private spaces of these residences are often kept confidential, a few palaces are known for their architectural splendor and historical significance. The Za'abil Palace is the official residence of uh, the Vice President and Prime Minister of the UAE and the ruler of Dubai. It's an iconic landmark featuring distinctive architecture and expansive grounds that exemplifies the regal nature of the ruling family. The traditional Arabic meeting places are integral components of these palaces, hosting dignitaries, guests, and important events. These spaces are adorned with intricate designs, reflecting a blending of traditional Islamic and contemporary aesthetics. Dubai's rulers will often use these places to engage with their subjects, fostering a sense of community and accessibility. They also play a crucial role in preservation, where discussions on heritage, customs, and governance will take place. And so, the Sheik lives in the exact fancy schmancy style that you would expect him to. There's nothing basic about any of these palatial estates, and they literally own anything and everything anyways. So, they can essentially do exactly as they please and live wherever they choose. Number 4. Cars Collection now, there's a lot of things so far that we have learned about the Sheik and what he's known for, but of course, one of his passions is luxury cars. And when you are as rich as God, well, you can buy anything that you like, and instead of collecting erasers in the shape of fruit like I do, you can buy some of the most luxurious and rare vehicles of all time. His car collection demonstrates his appreciation for high performance and exotic automobiles, and the Sheik will often share glimpses of his impressive car collection through his social media channels, giving enthusiasts a peek into his garage, which is a polite way of saying that he just enjoys showing off. The collection features an array of prestigious brands that includes Lamborghini, Ferrari, Bentley, Bugatti, and more, and notable additions include the limited edition Bugatti Veyron, Lamborghini Aventador, and customized Mercedes Benzes like the G63, AMG 6x6. His choices reflect a blending of cutting-edge technology, design, and unparalleled performance, because why the heck not when you are as rich as he is? His affinity for off-road vehicles is evident with his collection of rugged, but still uber-fancy SUVs for the action man aspect of his lifestyle. And of course, he gets everything totally personalized as well. While the exact size and composition of his car collection is not publicly disclosed, it undoubtedly mirrors the Emirates' affinity for luxury and extravagance. And it's definitely not made up of a modest and practical family car and a utility vehicle, that much is certain. Number 3. A Yacht Can you even claim to be rich if you never owned a super yacht? And would you just look at the size of this thing? This is a super yacht of the most extreme variety, and it once belonged to Old Faza himself. We're looking at it because he sold it, and so we get to have a bit of a poke about inside. Although it's only conjecture whether or not he actually owned this particular boat or not, it's largely an open secret that this was the Sheik's massive luxurious Art Deco-style floating palace. And when it went up for sale in 2022, there was a whole bunch of chat about its previous possible owner. And if you wanted a piece of extravagant boat-based luxury, well, you could have purchased this colossal object for the measly sum of $35 million. A bargain at twice the price, I'm sure. So, what did you get for that eye-watering figure? Well, the yacht was named Dubawi. It was built all the way back in 1989, but for the first half of its existence, it was actually a cruise ship. Just to give you an indication of the sort of size I'm talking about here. 
Then in 2009, it was converted into the most fancy schmancy super yacht that you could imagine. This 297 foot long yacht features 22 staterooms because who doesn't want to be able to accommodate 44 of their closest friends on their boat? Oh, and in addition to that, it also has its own nightclub, a guest lounge, two salons, an elevator, a swimming pool, a hospital room, a private owner's deck with a jacuzzi, and the most essential of all, a fountain. It sounds neat. I think I'll take it. Number 2. Underwater Diving Here we go again with Action Faza, as he posts pictures of yet another vacation in which he appears to be partaking in a lot of those extreme sports of which he is so very fond. He can be seen putting on a diving suit and getting ready to take the plunge. Naturally, he made sure to document the heck out of the entire outing and then bung it all up on his social media because millions of people need to know and see how awesome he is. So here we have the animal lover extraordinaire equipped with a spear gun of all things for the purpose of, well, being a tiny bit less kind to animals than he would be on the regular, I suppose. But the papers made sure to keep the reports of the trip extra gushing and they banged on about just how fabulous of a diver and deep sea fisherman the Sheik really is. It must be kind of tiring being so bloody brilliant at literally everything that you ever do. How does he even keep it up? Number 1. Skydiving And finally, the piece de resistance, the skydiving Sheik. Yes, this is a video in which the good old Sheik posted himself doing the most action man activity you can imagine in skydiving. But instead of doing regular old boring sort of plane leaping adventures, he did this jump from nothing less than a C-130 Hercules. Overkill? Well, maybe. But his fans seem to adore everything he does, and the PR spin that gets thrown around for his every outing is almost certainly not cynical in any way whatsoever. Interestingly, he never showed anyone footage of his landing. What that might suggest is anyone's guess. Well, that's all from the sycophantic chic loving channel for today. Which of these awesome adventures excited you the most? Go ahead and tell me all your favorite chic flavors in the comments down below. Be sure to check out all the other cool things that are also showing up on the screen, and I will see you next time. Hopefully.